disclaimer, this video is gonna contain a lot of annoying writing sounds. I'm sorry about that, my markers are all half dead, so they all squeak a bit. Uh, hello guys, it's me, the Vagina. Once again, happy Independence Day, because that's when I'm recording this. Uh, today, I'm gonna use this funny big paper thing to teach the, I think, 42 letters of the Smarkine alphabet. Now, I maybe I've made a video like this before. I checked. I don't think I have. Maybe it just has a random title, so I just didn't see it. I don't know. Anyways, I definitely have a bunch of videos that I was going to upload, but that I didn't upload where I did this. Hopefully, you're actually able to read the letters. I'm going to try to write them big enough. Now, before I actually get into the individual letters, just, you know, just some... Now before I actually get into the individual letters, just some like basic information about the alphabet. Modern Smarthine is written using the Cyrillic alphabet, which is, you know, obviously the same alphabet that's used in a lot of Eastern Europe, Central Asia, that region. Also in like this, this corner here, you're gonna see like the IPA symbol. And up here, you're gonna see the letter written again. Now I'm also going to explain letters that have differences when it comes to handwriting versus how they look on, for example, the screen. So obviously up here you're going to see what they look like on your computer and then I'm going to talk about how they're written. So the first letter of course is ah. It's just an A and it makes the ah sound. It's pretty self-explanatory. Next letter is It's just the B. Again, pretty simple. The next letter is V. Now you make sure you don't get any super confused. This is a B and this is a V, even though it looks like our B. Next up, we have the letter G. Now, this one has a very large difference, as you can see, or kind of see. I wrote it as like a mirrored S. Meanwhile, on a computer, it looks like a, a Greek gamma. The reason for a lot of these differences is because of cursive. It just makes the D sound, it's just a D. Next up is the letter Y. You can see it just looks like an E, and it makes the Y sound. Not E, that's a different letter. This one always makes the Y sound with the, with the J in front of it. Similarly, we have the next letter, which is going to be Yo. It's the same letter, just with two dots on top, and it makes the yo sound. Then we have the letter J. Here, it's just these three lines. It's like an X with an extra line, kind of. That makes the J sound. Then we have the letter Z. Which is just a Z, written like a three. Again, it makes the Z sound, pretty simple. Then we have E. As you can see, it's handwritten like a U, but on your screen it looks like a mirrored N, so it's like straight lines instead of this curve. I mean, it makes the E or I sound. Then we have again very similar letter, Y, which is just the same letter with a, a little curve on top as well. It makes the Y sound. Then we have K. This one's pretty simple. It's just a K. Then we have the letter L, which is just an L, makes a L sound, pretty simple. And it's written like a lambda, meanwhile on your screen it again has this weird like curve. Next up we have another very simple letter, M, it just makes the M sound, it's just an M, it looks like an M. Then we have N, which is also just an N, and it looks like a H, as you can see here. It makes the N sound. Then we have the letter O, which is just an O. It makes the O and O sound. Then we have the letter P, which, as you can see here, the capital letter looks the same, and the lowercase, when you handwrite it, looks like a an N. Meanwhile, the on the screen, it's the capital letter is smaller. Again, that's because of cursive. If you like italicize the font, it turns into this as well. Same goes for the, like the G, for example, or the E. 
uh, and yeah, it just makes the P sound, it's just a P. And then we have the letter R. Looks like a P, don't get those two confused. And this one either makes the R sound or the V sound. There's two R's in smart clean, so it just kind of depends on the word which one it is. So you just kind of have to remember that when you're learning words. Then we have the letter S, which is just an S, and it makes either the S sound or the Z sound, again, depends on the word. And then we have the letter, I already wrote it, but then I remember I have to explain it a little more about S. Uh, we have the letter T. It's just a T similar to P, it's the uppercase form is the same. Meanwhile, the lowercase, when you handwrite it, it looks like an M, and then on screen it's just the capital is smaller. Uh, then we have the letter U, apologies for the handwriting there. Looks like a Y, it makes the U or U sound, it's just a U, pretty, again, pretty simple. Then we have the letter U. They look very similar, um, for example, in cursive, a lot of people put like a loop through here on the U to distinguish the two. And it makes the U or U sound, which is like the U with two dots above in German. It's kind of hard to pronounce for English speakers. The way I heard it somewhere is like, try to say U and E at the same time, and then you get something along the lines of that. And then the short version, the U is the same. You say U and E at the same time, and then you get U. Except we have the letter F. As you can see, it looks like a T. It's just, it just makes the F sound pretty, again, pretty simple. Then we have the letter Ch, which looks like an X, and it makes the Ch sound, or a slightly different sound that I can't really replicate in a few dialects, but you know, it's Ch is the one. Then we have the letter S. You can see it looks kind of kind of funny. Uh, makes the T sound again. Apparently, this is hard for English speakers to pronounce when it's at the start of a word. They just get rid of the T when they're saying it for some reason. I don't know why. Then we have the letter S. As you can see, it looks kind of like a four. It makes the Ch sound like English CH, pretty, pretty simple as well. Then the next two might be a bit confusing because they're very similar. This one is SHA, makes the SH sound like the English SH. And this right here is, it almost looks the same, but it has like a leg. I know you can't really see it because the camera quality is ass, but you know, I've put the letter on screen, so. <coughs> so yeah, uh, this one here is H, makes the H sound, which is a sound, for example, we also have in German. Not in English though, at least most dialects. So it's probably going to be really hard to replicate. I think most people substitute it with SH, but please don't do that. Instead, I'd substitute it with H or H or something. Just not SH, please, please. It sounds like you have a speech impediment. But yeah, just make sure you know the difference between these two. Yeah. Next up we have the letter H. As far as I read, it makes the H sound, it's a H. Um, so I'll just remember, this is also, no other language does this. In Bulgarian, it's a vowel, and some other languages, it's silent, it doesn't make a sound. In Smart Green, it's a H, so just remember that. Then we have this letter. It looks like a B and an L. When you type it in handwriting, the two are connected. This letter is called I or Yeri. Yeah, I, I, I have to over enunciate it because otherwise I can't say it properly either. But it's e. Um, yeah, it's also a very hard sound for people that aren't used to it, including me. Um, but I guess you can just substitute it with e or something. But yeah, it, it's that. Then we have this confusing letter, which looks like the hub but without the little tail. And this one's called symbola weiche or the soft symbol. Now, this one is just, it needs its own video because it's just very strange. It just behaves differently in every word. Like, it's either silent or it, in some words it randomly makes a g sound or it's just, it, 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 it's pointless, right? It's pointless. We don't need it, but it's there. 
So you, sorry, but you have to learn it. Um, and then we have the letter E. Now this one is the E in a lot of other languages they use the Y for E. Smartgate has them separate. Um, so this one is E and this one is Y. This one is the one you're going to see a lot because it's a you know, common sound. Meanwhile, this one's actually sort of there. Uh, then we have the letter U. It looks like a, an I, then a dash, and, a, and an O. Like a one and a zero, I don't know. Or a fish or whatever. But yeah, it, it makes the U sound like the word U. Um, or U, I guess, if it's short. And then next up we have the letter Ya. It looks like a, it's, it's that mirror the art you've probably seen people using like fake Russian fonts. And it makes the sound ya, yeah, and uh, on its own it's actually a word that means I, it's like, you know, the first person. A lot of other languages now end with the alphabet, but no, we have a few more letters to go. Most of these are pretty simple though. So, first we have the letter A macronu, or A with macron. As you can see, it's an A with a macron, and it makes a long A sound. Then we have the letter E macronu. As you can see, it's an E with a macron. It makes a long E sound. You're noticing a pattern now. Then we have O macronu. Makes an O sound. Then we have U macronu. Makes an U sound. Then we actually have something different. The letter Wa, it's like U but with the little curve from Y at the top. Uh, it's also a letter in, for example, Belarusian that makes the W sound like an English W. Then we have the letter I Makronu, which is the most pointless letter because besides like that one river on Grand Cup, there's literally not a single word that I've made up that uses this letter. It's just there for the sake of being there. Then we have the letter Nje. It's uh, also a letter in Serbian. It looks like a combination of N and the soft symbol. And it makes the same sound that the funny Spanish N makes the Nje. So it's like N and Jot combined. Then we have the letter Eng. Or nga, I don't remember what I called it, I think it's eng. I think the nga sound like ng. But most of the time, you're not seeing that letter, you're just seeing ng as separate letters. This one's also kind of pointless. Same goes for nga. It's also pretty useless, but it just exists. And finally, we have the letter a tilde, which is an a with a tilde, it makes the o sound. You know, just that nasal a, o, and. This actually used to be like a very regional letter, only like by Alexa and Ned used to have it, but now it's pretty widespread. Now, the alphabet itself is done now, but I want to talk about a few other things such as letter combinations or digraphs and another symbol as well. So, the symbol that I want to talk about, I'll do that first, is this. Right here, it looks like the hep but it's written in like the same place you put an apostrophe. And that's what it is, it's an apostrophe. Now, there is also a regular apostrophe in Smaragdine, but that is used to like show you've shortened a word. Like when you get rid of a letter in a word so it fits, for example, a melody or something, or because of your dialect, you shorten words a lot. You put an apostrophe, meanwhile, when you'd actually use an apostrophe, for example, the demonym ending has, uh, has this symbol and then ski, um, so you, you, you use this, the small h. And it's also just called haparva, which is small h. Then we have some letter combinations. These are probably not going to be in alphabetical order. We have the letter, or the digraph, e, which is a, e. And we have the digraph, i, which is e, i. Not to be confused with a, which is e, j. We have oi, which is e, u. Then we have a very rare one, and one that's not native to Smaragdine, one that's actually carried over from Padlian. The, which is written, Te, Again, that's also because in Padlian they used to be, 
the Georgian alphabet, the Mkhedruvi alphabet, and it's also spelled uh, TF using that script because there's just no letter that would come close to that sound in that alphabet. And, you know, instead of just throwing in a random new letter that's only used in like four loan words, you just use this, the same diagraph as them. So that's, uh, but this is, if you ever see like a name that has TF in it in Smaragdine, it's usually like a Pavlian name and it's pronounced th. Then we also have, similar to, for example, E, we have ye, which is just ya e, or instead of I, technically you have yai, which doesn't appear anywhere, I'm pretty sure, but it, you know, and then yoi is the same word. Yay, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of I, there's a bunch of ways to write it. So sometimes it's written a i, otherwise, you know, e i, sometimes it's a y. You also have au, which is either a u or a wa. And then you also have one that's fairly common, o. And then, of course, you have your n, your z, your j, all of that stuff. It's not really worth like writing down. So that's all the digraphs, but I know I said I'd uh, be done after this, but I just remembered. There's one more thing, diureses, which if you didn't know is those two dots above letters. Now in Smaragdin you can write every vowel with diureses besides y and yo. Because you know, if you write y diureses it's just yo, and if you write yo diureses, you have two diureses, and that's kind of stupid. So you have a with a diureses, you have E, O, U, U, I, E, U, Ya, and then technically you can also do the macrons and like the nasal A, but that's kind of dumb. Now, these diureses don't change anything about like the sound the letter makes, but instead, for example, when you have these two letters, A and E, next to each other, you'd usually read it as E, but sometimes it's pronounced A, E. So, to signify that, you'd put two dots above the E. So these diureses, they're always placed above the second letter in the digraph. For example, another one would be I, or uh, e, and so on. And, you know, this, as I said, you can do this with every vowel, except for ye and yo. You kind of don't need it for those, you don't need it for you and ya either, because they already have that ye in front of them, so they only appear at the start of the digraph, and it's placed at the end, so it doesn't really matter. As well as, for example, with u, there's no digraphs that use u, so you don't need it, but technically it exists. Now there's a bunch of other stuff, for example, punctuation, or currency signs, or numerals, or the keyboard layout, cursive, transcription, all of that stuff I still have to cover, but this video is already long enough, so I'm going to end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed. I guess comment something if you want to see more smart theme lessons, because I kind of enjoy doing this with the flip chart and everything. It's pretty fun. Um, so yeah, until then, chaya.